The major geopolitical theme in the next decade is the competition between China and the US. Such a competition exists because since the late 70s, China gradually emerged as a new economic and strategic hub, adopting market reform and becoming a prominent actor of the international community. Such a rise was possible not only thanks to a stunning GDP growth, but also to favorable conditions labeled as window of opportunity. In the post-Cold War era, indeed, the US were busy in seizing the momentum and take a breath after 40-year competition with the Soviet Union. When the US were ready to contrast the emerging China, other priorities came into the stage, postponing a direct competition among US and China. This was true either in 2001, at the start of the Bush administration, due to the war on terror, and 2008, when President Obama was in the middle of the global financial crisis. Finally, Donald Trump put all his effort in containing China's unfair competition, according to his own view, and its satellite economy through the start of an expected, in Beijing, trade war launched in March 2018. Donald Trump was able to build a strong bipartisan consensus on his campaign on China because China changed significantly in the previous decades. If in the 90s China was introducing many market reforms every year and many thought that political liberalization would eventually follow market liberalization, this is one of the main reasons why Bill Clinton signed China's entry into WTO in 2001, such a view was on the vein in the following years. The global financial crisis that put in trouble also Chinese economy that had to shift from export-led to investment-led, causing 10 years later a debt boom, changed in Beijing the perception about the US model. Market reform and eventually political reform were no longer the recipe for a never-ending success. In contrast, China must develop its own political model in such a scenario, Xi Jinping became paramount leader in 2012 and began to promote his idea of Chinese dream, that is, to obtain full modernization and centrality in the geopolitical stage by the mid of this century, betting on technological and economical leadership and on a, a no longer submissive role towards the US. This is the general context for US-China competition. How did the, the US react? In 2011, President Obama and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton launched a, straight, a strategy named Pivot to Asia. The idea was to contain China through two pillars, economic and strategic. On the latter, the case was to move a big share of the US Navy from the Atlantic and the Mediterranean to the Pacific, while on the economic side, the plan was to build a trade pact that will keep regional countries tied to the US and will, hopefully, from a US perspective, force China to proceed with market reforms. The name of the pact was TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership, and was dismissed by President Trump at the start of his administration. However, the two pillars remained, and it's still possible to conceive US-China competition as a matter of economic and strategic issues. With the pandemic, a new factor emerged. Economic interdependence is not balanced, it is asymmetric. There are critical sectors of different relevance in which one of the two sides has an evident advantage. Masks, ventilators and other medical products in the pandemic time. Integrated circuits or rare hearts in the normal time. That means that any part is interested in reducing its dependence to the other and to be able to control the production of goods that the other needs. This is the story about so called decoupling, that means to separate China's and US economy in the sector one of the countries holds a strategic advantage. China's political economy after the pandemic is founded also on this idea to be able to produce in house the goods it needs to lead the economic and technological race. The name of the policy is dual circulation strategy and it's aimed to reduce uh, import dependence on sectors such as semiconductor and concurrently invest on R&D to build domestic cutting-edge industrial capacity. The view is that the long-term competition will be won in the economic field and staying with both uh, Pivot to Asia pillar is extremely important. Therefore, 
China applied for their new version of TPP, the CPTPP, and promoted other trade pacts such as RCEP with Asian countries. However, the strategic realm is not to be forgotten. In the last 10 years, China stepped up its position in the South China Sea and kept advancing its army. Taiwan has been labeled as the most dangerous place in the world because the US feels it must act to counter China's expanding role in the regional seas. And China feels encircled by US alliances such as Quad, AUKUS and the European interests in the region. Beijing's point of view is that the US goal is to avoid the leadership of an everyday more authoritarian China and that China needs to rise on the world stage to ensure better economic condition to its people. The balance between these two needs will be the leading story of the next decades.